I know. Hey everybody, it's Dr. Joe and Secretive of Remy. And today I'm gonna to show you my 20 minute real time shoulder stretches and exercise routine. So let's get started. Yeah. Disclaimer alert, disclaimer alert. So I'm gonna go ahead and get my timer started and we'll do the warm up, and then I'm gonna tell you a little bit about how I have the timer going. So we're gonna do a one minute warm up. And so I'm just gonna start with some shoulder circles just to kind of loosen up those shoulders. You wanna go forwards and backwards so you can kind of do whichever way you want. But with the stretches and exercises, we're gonna do for time. So we're gonna do 30 seconds, then have a short break in between each exercise or stretch, and then we'll have a long break in between each um, when we're changing stretches or exercises. So then you can kind of roll back forward this way. Again, this is just a warm up to get the shoulder muscles moving, going back. You can do a T motion where you're just kind of opening up the chest a little bit, um, kind of getting some movement in there. And then you can even, if your shoulders aren't bothering you too much, just make some arm circles kind of a front to back. So we're just kind of really getting everything just warmed up and ready to go into our stretches and exercises. So again, make sure you're doing um, forwards and backwards or clockwise and uh, counterclockwise, whichever way you want to do it. So we're going to go into the first one. It's just going to be an exercise. It's still a little bit of just getting everything moving. So it's going to be a shoulder flexion. I like to have my thumbs up and all I'm doing is just bringing it to about shoulder height or 90 degrees. Some people might go all the way up, but for this one, especially if you have a little bit of shoulder pain, this is how I would start off with, and I would start with my thumbs in that upward position. That just opens up your shoulder joint a little bit and it's usually less painful. So super simple, using both arms at the same time, going up and down. So I'm at a little bit of an angle, so you know, you would wanna be straight forward um, and making sure that it's comfortable. You know, if you can't go up quite that high, if your shoulders are a little tight or arthritic, just start where you're comfortable. You don't have to go all the way up to that 90, but if you can, that's great. And then if eventually you wanna go all the way up, you can. You also don't have to go as fast as I'm going. I'm just making a smooth, continuous movement, but you don't wanna go fast. You don't wanna use momentum. So you don't necessarily have to count. If you have to kind of start over and take a little break in between, that's good. That's what you wanna do. Just make sure those shoulders aren't hiking up. They're staying down. So the next one is gonna be just a different angle, same kind of movement, and this is called scaption. So scaption is not in the front, it's not all the way out to the side. It's about a 45 degree angle. It doesn't have to be exact, but that's kind of what you wanna do. Same thing, I like keeping the thumbs up, and now I'm going in that, what we would call a scaption is a, because it's in that scapular plane or where your shoulder blade is, kind of that angle. So a lot of times this movement is actually a little more comfortable for some people than uh, maybe right out in front of you or right out to the side. So again, Go slow if you want, slow it down a little bit. You know, if you if you feel like you're having to use your whole shoulder to lift it up, that's not quite doing the movement and then bring it down just a little bit. Because if you're hiking up your shoulder to try and lift up your arm, that means it's not moving freely and independently. And that's something that you really wanna work on. So I would rather you just go to here and do your movement instead of trying to like hike them up. So really go in that pain-free range without compensating. Um, so again, if you're, if you're compensating with the movements and you're not really getting that exercise or that stretch, if it's a stretch that you really need. Um, and again, I'm just kind of keeping it in that 90 degree range. Um, if you want to go a little bit higher, if it's comfortable, you can. So now we're gonna go into some stretches. Um, one of my favorite stretches uh, for the neck and the shoulder is the upper trap stretch. And so that's the next one we'll do. Um, I really like it. Again, there's a couple ways you can uh, do it, but I will just show you the way that I was taught to do it and the way that when I'm stretching, I do it. So we're, if we're stretching our left side first, I'm gonna sit on that left hand and I'm bringing my hand up and over where my finger's touching the ear and just pulling gently to the side. So I should feel that stretch 
right through there in that upper trap area. Now some, some stretches will have you kind of turn your head up and down. You can get a little bit different stretch, but for this one, you really wanna keep your head forward and you're just gently pulling to the side. So this is a full 30 second hold for that one. And then we'll switch over to the other side and we'll do two on each side. I know usually if you watch my stuff, I like to do three uh, 30 second stretches, but we're gonna try and keep it to the 20 minute routine because usually 20 minutes, once you get started, it's already almost over and it makes it easy and quick and everybody should have 20 minutes uh, in their day to take care of themselves. So again, just pulling over, I'm getting that nice stretch through here. A lot of times when I get some of my headaches, um, that comes from that side. I've had a shoulder injury and a shoulder surgery before, so this stretch feels really, really good. Now, if you can't sit on your hand to keep that shoulder down, that's okay. You don't have to. You can do the stretch without it, um, but you can also put your hand just behind your back. So like with this one, I'm just kind of placing my hand behind my back. I have found sometimes this is a little more uncomfortable for people versus sitting on it, but you might get a slightly different stretch. It really kind of keeps that shoulder blade down. So this is a, a good one to get that stretch in there. But if you just have to keep your hand down, I'm still getting that stretch without doing anything with my other arm, but this is gonna help keep that shoulder down to get just a little bit better stretch in there. So that's why I like to do it that way or even this way. And again, it's, it's purely up to you. Um, like I said, I've always kind of, I learned it sitting on my hand, but I actually do feel a slightly different stretch when I put it behind my back. And so um, whatever feels comfortable for you, again, because you want these stretches to be comfortable, um, you know, but a little bit of tension, maybe to the point where you're like, if I go a little bit more, I don't want to do it anymore, but I want to be able to hold it for that 30 seconds without being in pain or going, oh my gosh, one, two, three, four, five. You know, you wanna do that nice, slow, maybe take some deep breaths while you're doing it just to really get everything nice and relaxed. So the next stretches we're gonna do, we're gonna do a couple capsular stretches of the shoulder joint and that, that joint capsule, maybe you've heard your therapist or your doctor talk about it, is kind of that capsule that goes around the joint and it can get tight, it can get, um, you know, really, uh, irritated in there. And so some of the capsular stretches, we're just gonna do this one, which is either um, an, a posterior capsular stretch or sometimes people just call it across the arm stretch. Um, it's really great to open up that shoulder, especially if you've got a lot of tightness and maybe some scar tissue in there. Again, you can do this a couple different ways. Um, I like to do my arm straight all the way across. Sometimes that's gonna be a little uncomfortable for people. I'll go a little bit higher up my arm to stretch, but you can just kind of push on your elbow if you want to. So again, a couple different ways you can do it, a couple different ways you can modify. Um, if you are super, super tight, you're not gonna be able to take it over that far. If you're just to here, that's okay. Maybe if you have to come a little bit lower, maybe if it's uncomfortable to keep your arm up high, um, you can stretch a little bit lower in the beginning kind of to modify it a little bit. So I'm still getting a stretch. I'm not quite getting as much in that posterior or that back side of the shoulder. Um, but again, I'm still getting that stretch and then I can eventually work myself up to a little bit higher position. Um, some people will just place their hand on their shoulder. So I'll show you that in the, in the other position. Um, just if their arm is feeling heavy or again, hard to kind of hold up, you can just kind of place it here. And so it's kind of resting and then you're stretching over. So sometimes people get a nice stretch with that one as well. Um, and again, you can just take some nice deep breaths while you're st uh, stretching. If you're doing some diaphragmatic breathing, a lot of times that will really help those muscles relax so you can get a better stretch. And then as you breathe out, you can push just a little bit more. But again, they shouldn't be painful. There should be no pain while you're doing it. It should be uncomfortable a little bit. It should be, you know, uh, that hurt so good kind of feeling. I always say that, you know, it might hurt, but it's kind of a good, good hurt. And that, that's what you want to feel. Um, you don't really want to be to the point where you feel like something isn't going right in there. Um, stretches should always have that. It actually feels good and it's doing something kind of feeling. And again, just that nice 
stretch, a breathing to get that extra stretch in there is also really nice as well. And so then the next one is going to be for the inferior capsule. Um, sometimes this is a tricep stretch. Um, it's kind of the same thing. It's getting that capsule, but it's also stretching your triceps out as well. So we're just kind of stretching and working the muscles all around the shoulder to get everything nice and loosened up. Um, so again, this is one just depending on how tight or uncomfortable you are. You're just going to take the other hand and try and bring that elbow up towards the ceiling. So now I'm feeling that stretch kind of underneath there. I might be feeling it in my triceps. Again, if you aren't quite this flexible, maybe you're only to here, that's okay. You just go to your comfort level and what you can tolerate and when you're feeling the stretch. If you're not feeling much of a stretch, maybe kind of reset yourself and try again. Or if you have some flexibility, maybe come stretch from behind and get that stretch in there. And again, you know, this, uh, the terminology, um, sometimes there are different names, different things, but they're really kind of stretching the same area. So again, elbow up, trying to almost bring it up towards the ceiling. I like to go a little bit more further back. Some people will kind of pull in towards their head kind of at this angle, but I like to kind of go back a little bit more. But again, Try both angles, try the couple different angles and see which one is best for you and what stretch you feel like you're getting the most because um, you know what works for me might not work for you or you know what works for someone might not work for someone else. So um, it's always good to just try a couple different things and just see what feels good and works for you. And they both might feel good. So you could alternate and do one, one set of stretches. So I'd be you know, going back this time and then I'd be going at the angle the other time. So again, just getting those different angles and different stretches usually will feel really good. And a lot of times when I try and do my deep breathing when I'm stretching, I'll stretch, uh, I'll do the breathing a little bit more through my chest. But if you can get that diaphragmatic breathing in, um, that will really uh, help get everything nice and relaxed as well. It's just because I'm talking a lot, sometimes it's hard to get that diaphragmatic breathing in, but it really does help. So it's a nice way to get everything to relax. And then last one on this side. So again, maybe I'll pull a little more at an angle going that way this time to get that stretch. And I'm really just letting my hand behind just kind of hang down. If um, that's a little uncomfortable, you can kind of place it on the um, upper back or the lower neck area and just let it rest a little bit while you get that stretch. And then so after you get those stretches in, we'll do um, another just quick exercise. Um, and these are just gonna be shoulder squeezes or scapular squeezes. And these are some of my favorites. Um, so this one will kind of be um, not really a big hold, maybe a three to five second hold, but it's not gonna be that 30 second hold. So the biggest thing with the shoulder squeezes or the scapular squeezes is you're just kind of squeezing back. Imagine that someone's hand is on your spine and you're trying to take those shoulder blades and squeeze them back. Now I'm moving my elbows backwards a little bit, but I'm using those muscles in the middle of my back to squeeze back. A lot of the rhomboid muscles um, to get that squeeze. So it's not just pushing them back with my hands, but really squeezing back. Um, again, you can do kind of a three to five second hold with that, but also try and keep those shoulders down while you squeeze. So maybe you can only start off with a two to three second hold, that's fine. Then build up to three to five. And then if you wanna hold it a little bit longer, you can. But this is really more of an exercise. So just kind of squeezing back, coming in. But again, keep those shoulders down. So you don't wanna bring them up and squeeze because then you're activating other muscles. You really wanna try and keep the shoulders down and squeeze back. You don't have to use your elbows. I'm squeezing and I'm getting that squeeze without it. But a lot of times the first couple times you're doing it, um, it's easier to have those elbows kind of guide it back. But a lot of times if you take the elbows out of it, your muscles are gonna work a little bit harder to get that nice stretch in there. So then after you work, 
those rhomboid muscles, you might want to stretch them out a little bit. Um, so one of my favorite stretches for the rhomboids is just kind of a punch forward. If you're on the floor, you can have your legs out in front of you to get a better stretch, but you can definitely do them in a chair seated. You don't have to have those legs all the way out. That might be a little uncomfortable. So I'm just taking my hands, putting them out in front of me, clasping them. I'm going to punch forward. And as I punch forward, I'm going to tuck in my chin and arch my back behind me. So I should feel that stretch um, right between the shoulder blades. So my shoulder blades should be kind of fanning um, towards the front a little bit. And I'm getting a stretch in those rhomboid muscles there. So again, this one is a nice um, full 30 second stretch, really getting that good stretch in there. But again, it shouldn't be uncomfortable. So, um, you know, try not to push quite as hard if it's uncomfortable or try kind of resetting yourself a little bit just to get a nice, better stretch in there. So again, punching forward, tucking in my chin and arching my back a little bit. So I can even kind of kind of slouch down a little bit to get the whole back curving like a C. So I even turn just a little bit so you can see and get that nice stretch and hold in there. And so this is a good place just to take some nice deep breaths. So now that you got that going, we're gonna go into a PNF pattern, our proprio um, neuroceptive facilitation kind of uh, movement. So, or neuromuscular, sorry. Uh, but it, this is a D2 pattern. And so I like to call it grabbing and throwing the sword. Um, so what you're, you're gonna start with your thumb down on one side and turn your hand opening up like you're throwing the sword behind you. So the reason for the PNF motion is that you're using different planes, you're rotating through the plane. So instead of like the first ones where we were just going straight up and down, I'm grabbing, I'm rotating those muscles and I'm opening my hand up almost behind me like I'm throwing that sword away or I'm going into the charge and oops, my sword went flying away. So again, this is an exercise. You're kind of doing continuous ones, but you don't have to go fast. You can go at your own pace. Make sure you get the movement right. Hand down, I'm grabbing the sword, the thumbs in that downward position. I'm rotating up. As I rotate up, my hand opens up behind me. And then I come back down, I'm grabbing that sword in the air, and then I'm putting it back into the holster there. And so again, kind of rotating, opening up. I like to watch my hand as I go. Again, keeping my eyes on my hand and then rotating back down. So you can see a lot of times I'll have people um, kind of come down and then close it, but it's a continuous motion or I'll have them keep it closed the whole time and just open up at the end. But you're opening up your hand as you're turning. So it's this motion, I'm opening up and I'm closing it as I come back down. So it's not this and then this, it's a fluid motion opening up as I go all the way through and then kind of closing. And so if this becomes easy, uh, you can use a resistive band. I do have some videos with that um, to make it uh, a little bit tougher for you and to get a little more strengthening and stability there. Um, but make sure you have the pattern down first because if you don't have the pattern right, it's really hard. And of course with the resistive band, you wouldn't open up at the end unless you have the loop kind of tied onto your hand, which you can do it that way as well. But again, thumb down, closed, opening up as I go, throwing it away, and coming back in. And even without the resistive band, I can feel all my muscles, you know, working. It's not like if I'm not using resistance bands, I'm not getting any kind of uh, good exercise in there. I'm, I'm definitely feeling it as I go with this one. So the last one we're going to do is going to be a chest stretch. Um, tr opening up the chest and stretching out those pec muscles is a great way to kind of end everything because the way we're going to do it, we're kind of opening up the shoulder uh, joints as well to get a little stretch in there. This might be slightly uncomfortable for some people um, because you're clasping your hand behind you. And so you're going to push kind of down and out and then just push your chest forward. So this is that full 30 second stretch. Now, if you can't clasp your hands behind you, sometimes people will take like a towel and hold the towel. So they're, you know, a little bit separated. They can get their shoulders back there then, but you still have that tightness of the 
towel to kind of hold on to. But if you can clasp those hands together, that is a really nice stretch to get in there. And so I'm just kind of pushing out and getting that stretch. And so, you know, I'm feeling it in that pec area right there, getting those, uh, that chest area to open up, which is again, a really nice way to kind of finish everything. And if you wanna do this standing up, you certainly can. Um, sometimes you can get a little bit better stretch because I can maybe push downwards a little bit more while I'm pushing out. But even just right here, I'm getting a good stretch right through um, that pec area right there. And then you can, you know, even kind of push out your chest a little bit more to get that, that better stretch. So this is a, a really nice stretch, um, getting everything kind of that we just worked on in there. And that's it. So there you have it. That was my 20 minute real time shoulder stretches and exercise routine. If you'd like to help support my channel, make sure and click on the link up there and don't forget to subscribe by clicking down there. And remember, be safe, have fun, and I hope you feel better soon.